Wait, remember Chowder? Well, you freaking better. Chowder was a Cartoon Network animated series created by C.H. Greenblatt, which focused on a young boy named Chowder in a world of quirky and nearly magical food. I love food, but I'm trying to watch my figure, so since I can't enjoy the food I really want to eat, I wanted to fill in that appetite with a delicious little treat of a show, Chowder. So whether you do or don't fully remember the show, I'm talking about it anyway. You're going to hang out with me as I do so, and you're going to like it. I mean... Only if you want to. It's your life, but I appreciate you. Let's chow into some chowder today, shall we? Welcome back, or hello, for the first time, to the 25 Days of Fringemas, where I cover something interesting, nostalgic, or holiday-related every day from the 1st of December to the 25th, in order to find that holiday spirit I lost nearly a decade ago. So if you want to be a part of this daily journey and help me find that good old jolly joy, subscribe and come aboard. Our title character, Chowder, is a purple cat-bear-rabbit hybrid with a small pointed tooth that comes out of his mouth and an iconic two-point hat. My hat only has one point, and I apologize for not living up to the two-point standard. In the series, Chowder is learning under Chef Mungdal as an apprentice at Mungdal's catering company in order to fill his lifelong dream of being a great chef. This dream and Mungdal's cooking lessons are often sidelined though by Chowder's endless appetite and the fact that he's a bit of an airhead. No, literally, he do be just floating sometimes. Chowder's endless hunger does grant him the ability, as shown throughout the series, to regurgitate objects he's consumed. Think Yoshi or Kirby, but to a more graphic degree. Yuck. Because of this ability, Chowder is sometimes used as a video game backpack storage of sorts by other characters in the show. According to a quote from the show's creator, Chowder's design was made to mimic the image of a child soft squeeze toy versus any apparent species of animal in mind, pulling inspiration from Dr. Seuss illustration and designs. In fact, the world of the show itself, at least within Mungdal's place of operations, it feels a bit like Dr. Seuss and Willy Wonka merged companies and designed a factory together. I love that it feels imaginary and impractical for anything that needs to get done like just making thrice cream. You gotta do all these ridiculous steps with larger-than-life machinery, all for it to just be soiled by Larry the Jingleberry with mystery, uh, nether region hair. That's because he was meant to be a dingleberry. But Cartoon Network said, no way, you can't outright call him that, but I can. Chowder's cooking mentor, Mung Dahl, is a light blue, impressive mustache-toting humanoid head chef of the Mung Dahl Catering Company. He is named after the Indian dish, Mung Dahl, and his age throughout the series is never really specific though it can be noted that he has been cooking for at least 386 years. He's also been married for at least 450. Helping run the Mungdal catering from the business side is Mungdal's wife, Truffles, who's voiced by Tara Strong. Not surprised, she's voiced characters in every show ever made. Truffles is a mushroom pixie character that I am not convinced has not murdered someone and gotten away with it. Truffles' no-nonsense attitude is what keeps Mungdal's catering and Mungdal himself up and running. Despite her hardened nature, Truffles is shown to have a nicer, sweeter side throughout the series. Chowder is coming up next. Working alongside Chowder in the kitchen is Schnitzel, a rock monster in Mungdal's sous chef. While Schnitzel's vocabulary may be lacking, being limited to Rada, for him, a little goes a long way with Rada canonically being translatable into full sentences. According to the episode The Trouble with Truffles, Schnitzel is capable of normal speech. He is just seldom calm enough to achieve it. Schnitzel is the steady, straight man to the wacky, excitable characters in Mungdal's kitchen and every 2008 Tumblr girl's mood. What's up, baby? Take me out to dinner. Chowder's love interest in the show, despite Chowder desperately not wanting her to be, is Panini, and luckily, she's not a meanie for the most part. Panini is a cat rabbit, or a cabot, if you will, and chef apprentice to Mrs. Endive, a snobbish highbrow chef and rival of Mung Dahl. Because of her massive crush on Chowder, Panini spends much of the series trying to get him to act like her boyfriend, despite him asserting at the beginning of every interaction they have that he's not her boyfriend, which is made clear when he greets her constantly with, I'm not your boyfriend. I'm not your boyfriend! Gaspacho is this woolly mammoth shopkeeper who sells unique and strange ingredients at his booth at the farmer's market, and is a friend of Chowder's. He gives Chowder sometimes questionable advice, but totally a fan favorite for the series. Chowder ran from November 2nd, 2007 to August 7th, 2010 for a total of 49 episodes over three seasons. A pretty decent feat in an era where a lot of shows weren't lasting super long, but this isn't Nickelodeon, so seeing any show get past two, let alone one season, is incredible. Chowder was a unique show with 
with iconic humor that included playing with animation gags such as suddenly having an element that was live action, or in a very different style of it just straight up being puppets. Literally one of the funniest clips being of them mid-episode running out of the animation budget during a fourth wall break. No money means no animation! Where now the actual voice actors need to host a car wash to make money for the animation to come back? Honestly, can you even say that this show had a fourth wall to break? It felt like it was never there with this constant supposed breaking of it. The show was created by C.H. Greenblatt, a screenwriter, producer, storyboard artist, cartoonist, and voice actor as a take on the classic Sorcerer's Apprentice type of story, but with recipes and ingredients instead of potions and spells. Greenblatt's original designs for the characters came from a loose journal of ideas he kept while working on SpongeBob SquarePants as a storyboard artist. After coming up with this loose concept and character designs, Greenblatt pitched the show to Cartoon Network, who he was actively working for at the time as a writer and storyboard artist for The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Greenblatt also provided some smaller voice acting on Billy and Mandy as the voice of Fred Fred Berger. F R E Two years after the initial pitch, Chowder was greenlit, and a year after that, the first episode aired. Since his time working on Chowder has ended, Greenblatt has created the Nickelodeon show Harvey Beaks and the Hanna-Barbera animated series Jellystone for Warner Bros. Greenblatt even voiced numerous random characters in Chowder, including Kiwi, a pink creature who occasionally gave out some advice to various characters, and he also provided the voice of adult Chowder in the show's final episode, which took place about 20 years in the future. At the beginning of this final episode, Chowder, now an adult, has refused to grow up, going so far as to avoiding taking over the responsibilities of running the catering company, including allowing Mung Dal to retire and taking up the task of training his own apprentice. By the end of the final episode though, Chowder has learned to accept the passage of time and, with it, his own adulthood. Chowder marries Panini and gets to work as a professional chef. Snitzel and Miss Endive end up getting married by the series finale and left the catering companies, while Gaspacho has started his own comedy club and Truffles and Mung Dal have gone off and retired. And as far as show finales go, not only does it represent being prepared for responsibilities in your adult life, it's just also a satisfying conclusion that most cartoons don't get the chance to tell. During its run, Chowder received one Primetime Emmy Award along with two additional Emmy nominations. Chowder was cancelled in the summer of 2009 as the network decided to focus more on the audience demographic of older boys, favoriting shows like Destroy Build Destroy that was more marketed directly to that audience. Following the show's cancellation, C.H. Greenblatt expressed on his blog that while he was sad about the show's ending, he was also excited and mildly relieved by all the free time he suddenly had to take a break and focus on all the opportunities that Chowder had created for him. The show, I think, flows well into the earlier days of true online meme culture, now being heavily ingrained in many aspects of it. But even for all the random, weird, and ridiculous the show offers, it never felt like it did it because it needed to, but rather doing so because the creatives behind it were just having fun with it. A lot of what made the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy great and early SpongeBob SquarePants so memorable are apparent here. I think specifically by the show not having a barrier between the audience and allowing the end watcher to be in on the joke of what's going on gave it this status apart from the other cartoons at the time. Add that to the unique animation with that really cool and trippy effect of the backgrounds of characters' clothes or skin mainly consistently moving if the character moves as if they were green screened and the background was shining its way through. This unmoving plaid trope, which we have seen plenty of times before in many other shows, fits so well into the weirdness of the show and the rest of the color palettes it complements. Sure, it's loud and it can be that annoying kind of repetition that drives you crazy sometimes, but there is a lot here that works, and a lot that kept a smile on my face. It can be gross, it can be uncomfortably weird, and it can do basically whatever it wanted to with no real rules for the world. Everything having slightly different names from our world so close to what they actually are just feels too on the nose of the writers cracking dumb jokes after acquainting themselves with enlightened ground magic. Sentient food that doesn't mind being cooked 
endings with puppets, a world constantly adjusting to whatever the circumstances call for at a moment's notice. The show created what felt like a playground of imagination in a world built around the love of food and spirit of fun. I think Chowder hits different for a lot of people based on how the comedy lands. There are some who love it and those who really don't. I fall into the kind of love it category for how chill and fun it was to go through a rewatch of a show like this. But you should let me know what you think of the show, love it or not, in the comments below. Thanks so much for hanging out with me here today. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter or else. I'll see you tomorrow with another video for my next day of Fringe Miss. Check out the playlist to keep up with this month. But until then, later.